Steve Rao, thank you very much for agreeing to come on the show today. How are you doing? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I'm fine, thanks. I'm dealing with our current lockdown fairly well, so yeah, I'm quite happy. In your own words, tell us a little bit about your martial arts history. Yeah, as you say, it's um, 50 years worth of study and training. I think that um, I started really with karate and um, I studied eventually under Toru Takamizawa, studied the uh, Wadaru style of karate and uh, also studied Iaido with Okimitsu Fuji. And when he went back to Japan for a while, I changed to Vic Cook. So I studied Iaido and Jodo. In between those, I studied lots of other martial arts, but all of the ones I'm talking about, I've done you know, for 20, for, for 30 odd years. Uh, and then while I was doing karate back in the 1970s, I, I saw the Kung Fu television program with David Carradine. And uh, even if the Kung Fu didn't impress me, the bits of the Shaolin Temple did. And so I think it was the Buddhist philosophy that really appealed to me. Uh, that made me realize I, I was working in the security trade. I think at the time I was a second down in karate. Um, wasn't really interested in things like kata and form or I just wanted to fight and spar. And I suppose because I was working in the security trade as well, they were uh, an essential part of the trade. I, I was quite an angry, violent person. But um, luckily, um, I, at three o'clock every Sunday, I'd get to the television set and watch David Carradine and Kung Fu. And I kind of realized that's what I needed. So I went out and found myself a Tai Chi instructor. Uh, There's a guy called Simon Wired. And um, he very kindly gave me a copy of the Tao Te Ching. First book I'd ever read, to be honest. I was kind of a, a counts to estate street lad as well growing up. So I didn't really get a lot of schooling. And um, when I read the Tao Te Ching, I, first book I'd ever read, and it just opened my mind really. And that set me on a, a trail of studying Buddhism, Zen, Taoism, right the way through to, uh, in our culture, paganism, Wicca, anything to do with the mind and energy, really. I met Jim Aglo um, when I was doing karate and teaching in places like Norway. People kept saying to me, have you met Jim Aglo? And I hadn't. So I went along to see him and meet him and started to study privately with him. And um, through him, I went to uh, visit Mary Yang in Hong Kong. I think about seven times or something like that. Um, and that, that sort of was a very large part of the beginning of my studies of Tai Chi. So really, my base is Buddhism, Taoism, Zen, philosophy, and Tai Chi mainly. Okay. Um, and very quickly, how long ago did that journey with Tai Chi start? What year are we talking? Uh, when Kung Fu came out, I think it was 1973. Brilliant. Okay. So, in your own words, I mean, I don't, I'm not looking for a dictionary definition. Tell us, what is Tai Chi? Well, um, the words Tai Chi uh, come from the Tai Chi symbol, which most people know as the yin yang symbol. And um, Tai Chi was originally had various names like... Um, deceptive boxing or soft cotton boxing and um, when Yang Luchan was um, teaching or taking challenges he was teaching the uh, emperor's bodyguards in the imperial palace and um, one of the scholars that was watching at the time kind of suddenly stood up and declared this is Tai Chi and of course what we nowadays tend to call the yin yang symbol is actually the Tai Chi symbol and the to put it as briefly as I possibly can, uh, I think everybody knows what it looks like. Um, the circle around the outside represents the Tao or the way or infinity or the unconditioned, unborn, unformed. Um, inside, once you move the unborn and you create movement, you create opposite forces. So our minds recognize one thing because it has an opposing force so we only know it's light because it gets dark um, we only know it's hot because it gets cold and so on 
and that also causes our suffering. But the uh, line down the middle, the S shape down the middle of the symbol um, is we are still carrying the unborn or the unformed or unconditioned with us. It's what is looking out of our eyes and that is still with us and that's when we balance the yin and the yang um, and the words tai chi mean if you take it literally as um, the great ultimate and the great ultimate being the way or the Tao or the unconditioned part of the universe which is also us the practice of tai chi is to be able to um, take refuge or find ourselves within that unconditioned so that will unfold from the inside out it's very quick but i hope that helps it's absolutely fantastic i mean i follow your work uh, you're all my teacher and uh, i read all the stuff that you say but um even hearing you describe that there uh, gave me different insights into what tai chi is so thank you very much Steve, I know you've explained to me that um, the history is a little bit murky, that maybe there's more than one version, but give us the Steve Rowe version. Where did Tai Chi originate from? When was it? When did anybody first say, this is Tai Chi? What's the story behind that? Uh, well, that is literally lost in the mists of time and the Chinese love a good legend or story. Um, so there are lots of stories of um, people meditating in front of a lake and watching a, a snake and a crane battle and one was balancing the other all the time. One couldn't defeat the other and suddenly uh, found Tai Chi from there. I, th I think the truth is, like all Chinese martial arts, it was a good martial art. It was a form of Chinese boxing. And like I say, it was called deceptive boxing, it had lots of different names. And I think the, the roots and the origins come from both inside and outside of the Shaolin Temple. And I think that uh, Yang Luchan, I believe, also practiced a form of long boxing um, before he went to the Chen village. He learned the Kung Fu in, in the Chen village, melded the two together and the, the style of Yang Tai Chi was, was really born from that. Okay, and that brings me to my next question. There are different versions or styles of Tai Chi, aren't there? I know that the one that you teach us is Yang style Tai Chi. Um, is there only one right way or is it a case of what you fancy, what you personally feel best? suited to just give us a talk through the various versions if you can yeah i mean chen style tai chi obviously comes from the chen village there's wu style li stuff i think it's just like kung fu or karate you could say there's only one kung fu there's only one karate the rest is just politics uh, and i think you, you 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 could say very much the same for tai chi tai chi is the grand ultimate it is the unconditioned. If what you're doing is not leading you to be able to uh, reside in the unconditioned and therefore be able to observe the conditioned world and deal with it in a more efficient way, what you're doing is not Tai Chi. Tai Chi is also, it's a form, it takes, once you stir the universe and you create yin and yang, the idea of Tai Chi is it's enabling you to balance the yin and yang to be able to um, access, if you like, the unformed. The idea is you don't do Tai Chi, Tai Chi does you. So I would say personally, there's only one Tai Chi, there's only one Karate, there's only one Kung Fu, Taekwondo or whatever. The rest is just politics. Okay, can you expand a little bit more for those who don't know, what is Yin, what is Yang? Yeah, so uh, they're the two opposing forces in the universe. So uh, yin would be female, night, uh, yang would be male, and day. So you, you could say yang would be anything more or less to do with you know, uh, air and fire, and yin would be um, earth and water. So the feminine aspects um, 
you know, in our language in English, we don't have gender, but a lot of other lang lang languages do. So if you looked at it in a gender fashion, you know, the yin, the femininity is, is, is yin and the male, the masculine is, is yang. Okay, and from what you said about your own personal history, you perhaps, as a young man going into martial arts, you were far more yang, masculine, angry, assertive, wanting to fight. Um, yes. And so for you, the appeal was to become more laid back, more um, open to life, more feminine, not necessarily effeminate. Yeah, I think I was... Um ignorant in the true meaning of the word i ignored a lot of things unintentionally but um my culture and the way that i was brought up was probably quite violent um quite masculine and assertive and therefore i realized i'd reached a certain point in in my training as well where and my work that i knew that if i carried on the way i did i would end up in prison or, or you know, dead or something so I knew I had to do something. And the moment I saw the Shaolin Temple, I don't know whether it triggered, triggered something kind of karmically or just whatever, but I realized that it, 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 Buddhism had the wisdom that I was looking for. Um, culturally, I was atheist. I wasn't brought up with any religion. Um, but I realized there was the balancing factor there. And it was an instinctive thing because I don't think I was intelligent enough at the time to be able to work out and evaluate what I needed. But when I looked at that, I realized I just, that's where I had, had to go. Thank God I did. Well, Steve, I've got to say, I really want the interview to be about Tai Chi, but on a personal level, um, I was the same as you. I was a little bit older than you when I first watched Kung Fu, um, but it had exactly the same effect. Those words of wisdom, that the bit that some kids would find quite boring, where's the action, where's the action? Whenever it went back and showed him as a boy getting his lessons, those words of wisdom completely gripped me. And I felt the same when I re-encountered uh, Taoism later in life and Buddhism. Um, but I know that at the start of the interview, you said it's quite obvious to people what it looks like, but for some it, it won't be described to us what the practice of, of Tai Chi um, involves physically, mentally as well. Yeah, it's very much like peeling an onion. So uh, you, you, it's not that you take more on board, you actually unfold, uh, which is a very Taoist term. So you have Tai, everyone has Tai Chi. And we're all kind of, it's a little bit like the, analogy of the man with the precious jewel in between his eyes traveling the world looking for precious jewels you know sometimes we've, we've got to stop we've got to um be still and, and calm down and be able to allow ourselves to to unfold so when you look at the practice of tai chi you, you start with standing postures and we stand in yin we stand in yang and we we have to understand the qualities of, of each one in our, our mind, our emotions, and our body. It's a little bit like when I studied Wicca, we, we had to do what they call the wheel of the year. So uh, you, know, you would spend the, uh, the three months to, to do with earth, you would study earth. The three months to do with water, you'd study water. The three months with air and three months with fire. And you would ab ab absolutely immerse yourself in each one of those. In Tai Chi here, we, it's the same practice. We begin by, by standing in yin and holding the postures that encourage yin in our body. And so, for instance, when we stand in yin, we are looking for patience, kindness, tolerance, and compassion. When we stand in yang for resolve, determination, courage. So we, we develop what I would call a soft front and a strong back. So we become more balanced ourselves. We then go through the qigong. So we twist, turn, and bend our spine and the deepest muscles of the body, the core muscles of the body, and we realize them and empower them inside of the body. And then we go into uh, form practice and uh, we then take those yin and yang shapes and we, we swirl them, really. 
So we, we keep the body's frame. So good posture, deep breathing will calm down the body, it calms down the mind, it calms down the emotions. So you, when you watch Tai Chi, what you should get is a, a very powerful feeling of calmness, um, but also the underlying power. It's also, when you explore it further, it's a very powerful martial art. So you know, from a self-defense point of view, I, I've done a lot of different martial arts and for me, Tai Chi was way, way beyond any of the others. So I think for somebody to watch Tai Chi, and if you wanted to practice Tai Chi, if you're looking at it and thinking, this is what I'd like to do, uh, most certainly good posture, deep breathing, um, a calm body, a calm mind, calm emotions, but also developing power. So it's not weakness. You know, peace in this world is earned. So we, we have to study and we have to practice and we have to be strong enough that we choose peace. It's not just being weak. Absolutely fantastic answer. Um, something that else that dawned on me that I want to uh, I'd rather hear from you, because I know that you've got a, a fantastic phrase about this, is that for anybody that looks at Tai Chi in the same way that they might perhaps look at karate or doing a degree course or something like that where they tend to be focused on where they're going they tend to be focused on the next grading or getting a degree i think with tai chi it's almost the opposite of doing it's not what you do right i think you say it's trying to avoid doing things wrong you know where i'm coming from steve <laughs> yeah, yeah i do yeah, I, it's one of those things I, I, the, the Buddha said, don't try and go out to do good, simply refrain from causing harm. You know, one of the, the things that this is what makes us peaceful, rather than uh, trying to become something, we get to realise we actually already are. Uh, and I think that um, it's understanding, uh, probably good terminology is the unconditioned and the conditioned every thought is a condition every emotion is a condition everything that we do in this physical world are conditions and those conditions are thoughts they're emotions they become our habits and uh so if you like that's what we as such people would say i want to become this or i want to become that what we do in tai chi our actions and our thoughts are all conditioned and developed to point to the unconditioned so that we know where we're looking from. It's easy to lose where you're looking from. You know, when you're a baby in the pram and you have no name and you have no thoughts and you have no conditions, you're just conscious. Well, that same consciousness we still have, it's, it's timeless, it's, it, it's um, immortal. It's what we've risen from, it's what we go back to. So we live in a conditioned world, obviously, so what I would say is, is it's more becoming wise. We still have feelings, we still have emotions, we still have desires and so on, but we're wise enough to understand these are just conditions. But we take refuge or we live in the unconditioned. That's what Tai, tai Chi does. Okay, so um, that leads me to the next question, which is this. A lot of what we've spoke about today, if you like, are the mental the spiritual the psychological purpose of tai chi training and outcomes that we can expect the mindset if you like but what can one expect to happen physically with the practice of tai chi and is it for everybody yes yeah, so the first obvious things are you will get good posture deep breathing Deep breathing is really important to breathe properly from what we would call the lower dantian, which is the area from the groin to the belly button at the front and the sacral area in the back. So the whole area of the spine is moving as you breathe. And as you breathe deeply, it draws the diaphragm down. When it draws the diaphragm down, it gets more air into the lungs, more oxygen to the blood, more oxygen to the brain, which is what makes the mind more aware and by focusing on our breathing and, and or focusing on our Tai Chi, um, 
we have an aware, focused, sensitive and intense mind. The, the physical, so first of all, it's good health. And when I say good health, you know, if you look at sit from a self-defense point of view, um, what kills most people is um, sickness, illness, um, emotional and mental turmoil will destroy our health. So the idea of good posture and good breathing, deep breathing, to calm the body, the emotions and the mind down will definitely increase your health more than any running around and push-ups and things that, that you might want to do. So the first thing that anybody can expect is good health. Emotional intelligence will come second because of our Tai Chi with the yin and the yang training. And then when you move further on from there, the, the, the form training will give you structure and movement. So you'll move your body in all the different ways that it can and you'll develop the, the lines of energy and power through the body. And a lot of the push hands training that we do, there's an aspect of we have to be able to relate to the rest of the world because if you only ever trained on your own, um, you would be missing a very large part of your training. So social interaction is very important, how to deal with all different kinds of people. And the great thing with our push hands training is it gives you spontaneous reactions to everything. One of the biggest problems I've found doing karate with um, one step sparring, three steps sparring, he does this, so you do this. And you often hear people when they're teaching endlessly, he does this, so you do this, and he does this, and you do this. When you get into a real fight, it's nothing like that at all. You need spontaneous, emotionally intelligent actions and reactions. And, and the push hands and applications work that we do will um, encourage and teach that aspect. That's why it's a very good form of self-defense. Self okay, and for anybody that doesn't know what push hands is, can you just give us a brief description of a push hands exercise? Yeah, it's where both people would meet hands in the beginning. You would maybe start with the back of the hands or wrist to wrist. You would maybe make circles to start with, but in the end, you would use all the different uh, blocking movements, uh, striking movements, locking, throwing, strangling, choking. So everything gets into the mixture in the end. Um, and you start with structured drills like anything you have to but very quickly with push hands you will move on to uh, spontaneous reactions so it's about sensitivity yes Fantastic. Yeah, I, you, you, I mean in in pushing hands you hide your bones so the, the opponent never fills your bones it's, it's it's very very soft and which is why it was called soft cotton boxing for the opponent. It felt like you're putting the hands into soft cotton, but inside, if necessary, there's a very sharp needle. Okay, and so um, you, you've partly answered the question. I think that you've said, you know, from what you've said, Tai Chi is for, for everybody. Um, mm. Is there a simple exercise? I know that you've got quite a serious health condition yourself that stops you from being able to run around right now but is there a very simple exercise that you can give anybody watching this video or listening to it on the radio or listening to the podcast an exercise you can give them to go to do so they can get a taste of tai chi yeah and, and this exercise can be done with your sitting standing laying down walking because it's mindfulness Mindfulness is the most important thing for any of us to be able to do. And mindfulness comes from good posture and good breathing. Good posture very simply comes from as if you've got a rope tied to the crown of your head pulling you upwards. So you keep being as tall as you can and you can do that whether you're sitting, standing, laying down or whatever. But you stretch your body and open it upwards. That's very important. And it also releases... Um, the tissue and the spine to enable you to be able to breathe properly. You can't breathe properly without doing this. And when, when your spine particularly is, is, is open and you're able to use the lower dantian, like I say, from your groin to your belly button and your lower back, expand that area to allow the, the air to come into the, to the lungs. So it's very simple. I call it 
be tall, breathe deep, and then focus your mind because breathing deep will create the awareness of your mind. You then need to make sure that you focus it. The enemies of the mind are laziness and distraction. So if you focus it on your breathing and your posture, so it's that simple. Be tall from the crown of the head being raised. Breathe deep from down here, including your lower back and sides. Expand the area to draw the diaphragm down. And make sure your mind stays focused on your posture and your breathing. And you can, like I say, you can do that seated, standing, walking, laying down, whatever. That creates a state of mindfulness. And spontaneously, hopefully, if you practice that, you'll reach a stage of absorption. And absorption is where the thinking mind will slow down sufficiently. Uh, it's like closing all the windows on your computers. And then your, your, um, your consciousness will arise from there and you will be able to feel it. You've given me an absolutely fantastic interview today, Steve. I really appreciate it. And I feel as though you've covered the main basis that we could have covered within a 20 minute, 25 minute interview. Is there anything else that you want to add about Tai Chi before we close? Yeah, I, I'd simply say the component parts of Tai Chi. It's very important to understand the Nagong is the posture and the breathing and the yin and yang understanding, which creates um, emotional intelligence and good health. The Qigong is the exercises to find all the different ways that your body moves to keep it open, supple and healthy. Then you've got the forms, which are putting all of that into movement and the pairs drills like push hands, which is the social interaction and testing it with other people. That's the structure of Tai Chi. We also go on to use that in weapons. So broadsword, double-edged sword, spear and so on. Um, and two person sets. There are a lot of different things, but they're the main component parts of Tai Chi. You're not doing Tai Chi if you're not doing those. And the other thing is to just recognize that it is a very, very powerful martial art. I teach a lot of security personnel, uh, law enforcement officers, and they, they, they all like the Tai Chi best because in their words, um, to be able to deal powerfully and with emotional intelligence with any circumstances that crop up and being able to have a spon spontaneous um, intelligent reaction to what's going on, uh, that makes their job a lot better and a lot easier. Fantastic. And what I would say is for anybody that wants to learn Tai Chi, as we've discussed, um, you know, you might decide you want to do Chen or Wu. You might go to a teacher in your area. There's lots of places you can go. But since, Steve, you've been kind enough to give me your time and your expertise today, and we are all locked, locked down, the online digital world has made it a very small place. Um, how can people contact? you um for your guidance and tuition on yang style tai chi yeah i'm kind of on all social media platforms so you'll you'll find me on all the normal ones facebook twitter and so on um so if you just put in steve rowe or whatever you'll find them there i've got a blog with about 400 articles on which is steve rowe.com and our online platform is shikon.thinkific.com. You can register on there for free and have a look around. And there's a lot of free stuff on there, particularly at the moment while we're in lockdown. I've kind of opened the whole platform up to help um, people to keep their bodies and minds working well. So at the moment, you can get on there for free, find lots of free stuff. And all of my talks on anxiety and fear, I think I put about 20 talks on there now. They're all free as well. Again, thank you very much, Steve, for your time today. I've really enjoyed this interview. And for thank everybody you. else, thank you for tuning in today and taking the time to listen to Martin Explores. Today, we've explored Tai Chi. What will it be next time? You'll have to find out. Take care.